the yeah, uh, Perkinson professor in the Department of Mathematics, uh, yeah, William Mary, as well as the uh, affiliate faculty in the Applied Science Department, William Mary, and the affiliate member in the Institute for Quantum Computing, uh, University of Waterloo. And the expertise of Professor Chi Guang Li is on, in particular on linear edge bar and matrix and operator theory. And today we are, we are very happy to have the, the talk from Professor Chi Guang Li. And by the way, I want to yeah, mention that the Professor Chi Guang Li was, who visited us yeah, as a visiting scholar from this summer for, yeah, for one year. Okay, so yeah, let's welcome Professor Chi Guang Li. Thank you. Thank you very much for the nice introduction. And also thank you for the organizer uh, to give me the chance to share my work. So I debate a little bit because the conference is supposed to be uh, by famous physicists talking about their recent work. So I uh, work on this um, quantum information science is somewhat related to quantum physics, but by no means I can declare myself as an uh, expert in uh, physics. So uh, when I choose a topic, I decided that, uh, well, one way is to choose something uh, abstract mathematics, which will be useful in quantum information science, which is the, uh, my recent uh, interest publishing from 2008. So it is 13 years ago, I start to publish in quantum error correction and so forth, I'm talking about those uh, operator algebra approach to deal with the problem. But I think if I uh, just talk, keep talking about this abstract mathematics, it uh, lost the touch that uh, in such, such a nice meeting, I would have the chance to connect myself from all the experts in physics. Uh, thing I want to do, which I know some mathematics, but do not know much about the phys physical part. So luckily I have a collaborator who will be the third speaker of this session, Professor Mikio Nakaha from uh, Japan, and also uh, Diane Palejo. And I have two William & Mary students. So I finally choose a topic which almost everyone in information science will try to do quantum to tomography. And then I will talk about the theory, which is my interest. And also recently using the IBM quantum computer, I start to realize that there are some very interesting practical issues. Look at that. And also I learned from Mikio Nakara, Mikio, my good friend, that uh, on the NMR or quantum computer, there are other practical issues arise, which trigger very interesting theoretical problem. So I will, I'm going to tell you uh, some, uh, an ongoing project with uh, two students, William and Mary student and, 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 and my colleague on this. And also as uh, uh, Ray Gong said, uh, that I will come to visit Taiwan in uh, 2021 to 2022. And I am very interested in connecting with the physicists and also bring my experience in working with undergraduate students at the William and Mary, we always do this kinds of undergraduate research project. And some people said that it is impossible to involve uh, undergraduate student to do quantum information science, for example, too much background. So also I want to show that it is perhaps possible and quite fun to work with the student. Okay, so that is a, a motivation for me to choose this uh, topic. Okay, now, please. Don't hesitate to interrupt if I'm talking something too trivial. Um, you have the answer. I would like to know. Actually, I'm not going to tell you a lot of uh, glorious result, but rather like to uh, draw your attention. Perhaps you can help me to solve some of the problem. I am Hunter. So, of course, as a mathematician, so I use the mathematical model, and of course, uh, I think most uh, people in the audience would know that for quantum state, the mathematical model using the um, Hubert space model, we always assume a um, quantum state with an n measurable or physical state uh, as a n by n density matrix. So, my definite matrix with trace one. For example, very often in quantum information science, we use qubit. So it's a two dimensional quantum state. So it is represented by a two by two density matrix. And uh, the physical state, for example, if you choose the basis, uh, standard basis to be the two physical uh, state. So that two guy will be, the two matrix will be the physical state. So when we do 
observation measurement, these are the only thing we will be able to, to see, it meaning that the corresponding physical, physical state we can measure or we can uh, recall. So what is a quantum state tomography, which is just in major theory, it's very easy. I have this two by two matrix, it is hidden. Can I somehow extract the information? Of course, I cannot reconstruct quantum state, right? Quantum state cannot be, be, be produced easily, but I can determine the quantum state, what are the matrix, what are the four entries? Well, of course, you look at it, and we'll say, oh, I look at the matrix and I, I can see that. But if it is hidden, can I just somehow detect those entries? And the answer is yes. As I said, the physical state, uh, this two matrix 100101, so you can detect them. And with suitable apparatus set up, then you can actually detect the 11 entry and the 22 entry. So usually, for example, we use the IBM quantum computer, you can collect the statistics. Why? Because when you measure a quantum state, you only see 100 or one. So you have to have many, many supply of this quantum state. Either you do it simultaneously or you do it one by one, then you can get some statistics to see how many guys behave in this way or how many guys behave in the other way. And if you do enough experiment at, and if there are enough identical, identical quantum state available, then you can do this so-called measurement one after another until you get a estimate of what are the probability of the first guy uh, happen or the second guy happen, which will give you the row zero zero row one one. Okay, of course they are trace one, so we know that if we know one, we know the other one. So if you do one thousand times of me uh, measurement, you, you 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 apply the measurement operator, you see one thousand times, you get the, for example, up spin. Uh, oh, one hundred times, fifty times is up spin, fifty times is uh, the so called down spin. Then you know that this is a one half one half on the two diagonal entry. You keep using apparatus. Suppose you have a group of students and then you set up the apparatus, you can always check this guy. But no matter what you do, if you have a 1,000, so many identical state, you always can only measure the one one entry. How can we get the full information, the hidden information in the off diagonal part? Okay. So to get the full information, I like the description of uh, Mikio's book. So it is like watching a TV or a picture or a three-dimensional object. If you look at, uh, use the apparatus setup, you can only read the one one entry and two two entry. How can you get access to the one two two one entry of the matrix, the quantum state? So typically, for example, a quantum state can be parameterized in this way. You have three real number A, B, C. If you keep using the same operators, Apparatus set up, you only read out A, right? Because there's the row zero, zero. And then one minus A is for free because I'm up to one. So you use a so-called rotation of your quantum state. For example, if I can apply a unit three, you know, quantum operation for a closed system is always unit three similarity. So I can apply this U and U dagger to, con to change the matrix, to change the quantum state. In other words, I look at it from an other angle or I do a change of apparatus set up using a different um, state basis, then I see one plus B, one minus B on the diagonal. After I change the state to this form, if I do the measurement, then I will have information about B, which is the real part of the one, two entry. It happened that if you use U dagger row U, this rotation will bring C to the diagonal element. So when you do the measurement here, then you will get information about C. If you get information about A, B, and C, you do 1,000 measurement of the original guy, 1,000 measurement of this guy to get the statistics, and then you do 1,000 uh, measure of this guy, then you get all the A, B, C information up to a certain accuracy, then you basically determine the quantum state. So that is a very simple idea, okay? So the trick is that in this particular setup, the information you can access is limited because of the um, constraint of the quantum property. But then we have to use some trick either in the physics lab, we by experience know what to do or in mathematics, uh, we try to do it in this way. So even for this uh, so-called 
a qubit state, you need three, and you have to use three measurement or rotation to get the full information, right? Because you have three parameters, A, B, C can be anything. Actually, it should be A squared plus B squared plus C squared less than or equal to one to ensure that this is positive semi definite. To get these three pieces of information, each time you can only measure row zero, zero, row one, one, which is only one number because they sum up to one. So you have to use three rotation to do that. So this idea can be extended easily by so-called qubits, or if you like a uh, two qubit, so it becomes a four by four matrix, or in general, you have a uh, quantum state represented as a capital N by N, um, density matrix. And we know that for N by N density matrix, you need N squared minus one real number to determine it because you can count the number of diagonal entry, there are N of them, but trace one, so you have N minus one. And then you look at the upper triangular part, you will ha have to de determine those complex number, which is N times N minus one divided by two, but complex number, you have to multiply two to get N times N minus one, so many entries in the upper triangular part together with the N minus one diagonal entry, that is enough to determine because the lower part will be determined by the upper triangular part. Okay, simple mathematical counting. So even give a, a <laughs> high school student, not to talk about uh, undergraduate student. So if every time our rule is that you can only access N minus one real data, the diagonal entry, remember there's a redundancy. So every time when you read, you only read N minus one, the last one must be sum up to one with the previous one. So if, if you set up the apparatus or you just look at row and measure the diagonal entry, so to speak, the physical state, you can do experiment on, you get n minus one data. But now you require n squared minus one data. Very easy, you see that if you want to get the complete information, if you are good enough, like what we have done for the two by two case, move all the information from the off diagonal to the diagonal, you still need to use n plus one so many rotated quantum state to do the measurement. And we always do that for two by two, we exhibit this matrix U, you can rotate the information to the diagonal so that you have access, you can do experiment, at least theoretically do experiment to get that. So the first simple proposition using a little bit of topology and linear algebra, you can show that indeed, you can always find n plus one so many linearly independent unit three to do the rotation so that you get the full SS. Doable mathematically. Theoretically, it can be done. And how about in practice? So our team with very uh, smart undergraduate student. So we uh, get access to IBM quantum computer, the online quantum computers. And they are for free for us to use up to five qubit. If you want to use more qubit, you may have to pay or to make some arrangement. Now, as a mathematician, I don't have access or expertise in doing the physical lab. So I this, this become my uh, very good tool to learn about what are the physical rules in the implementation. So later, because of uh, working with Mikio, I will also talk about the NMR platform. Now, let me just use the IBM platform. So you can actually, use the circuit to do, to implement your U and do the measurement, so to speak. So I show you the picture, right? So earlier that you can actually get the statistics for the diagonal entry, think about that. So if five qubit, of, of course, it's still not, not a, a, a sizable or a realistic situation, but at least in theory for a five qubit state, which will be what, two to the power, five, which is a 32 by 32 density matrix. So how many uh, rotation I have to do? How many experimental setup I have to do? So I have to do all the way from U0 up to U32. So each time I set up a network to perform the measurement so that, or each time I set up the rotation U, I can then do the measurement to get the diagonal statistics and I collect all those. Okay, so of course, 
set up the, the unit three. So again, I mentioned multiple times, Mikko, who really is uh, the one who lead me to all this understanding about um, the practical issue of this quantum information science. For linear algebra for a mathematician, unit three is good, but not all unit three are the same. When you talk about implementing a unit three in the lab, even on the uh, IBM quantum computer could be very challenging. We know that there's a universal way to decompose you to some simple gate so that you can, uh, the qubit gate and the CNOT gate so that you can implement any unit three in theory. But it could be extremely inefficient. So in this, uh, uh, at least theoretical experiment, it would be nice if we can find some simple U. And remember, we have to do 33 so many U set up for a five qubit state. So each U, we want it to be simple. How simple? For example, local unit three. So if the unit three I need will only act on the individual qubit, this five qubit, with no mix in the implementation, and then do the measurement, that will be wonderful. Then it will be very easy to implement. So I believe if there are some, uh, for example, Ray Gong is doing uh, linear optics and so forth, I hope, I, I think the other experiment would, would, would agree with that. If you have these this kinds of simple local unitary, it is much more preferred in, uh, in terms of uh, implementing that. Can we do that? Again, we have to go back, right? So ideally we can use these kinds of simple setup to do the job, but it, can we always do that? So the answer is that yes, you have some simple setup, but 33 is not going to do the job. You have to use much more. How much more? Well, embarrassing to say, even such a simple matrix problem. At this point, we have the uh, conjecture that we can use three to the power n so many. Instead of using Remember, this is two to the power n plus one, 33. But if you do five, then we believe that you have to use three to the power five, so many local unitary network to do that. Okay. And for n equal to two, we actually implement that. It can be done. And for two qubit, right? For such a, a simple case, so four by four matrix, we can use nine steps to do that. And we show that it is, and equal to three, we can show that we can indeed use all this local unitary, but you need 27 steps. That is enough. We do not even have a proof up to this point. <laughs> you cannot do better. So maybe I should stop here. So anyone have experience about that? Can you do tomography just using local unitary to detect that? Okay, so if anyone have any experience in their lab or a physical setup, which can, you can just use local unitary for n qubit, but do it three to the power n time or even less, then that would be really wonderful. So my approach would be to do mathematics to show that it is possible and then ask the question, how to set up this local unitary. Remember, each three to the power n, you need such a setup. So this is a huge number. So even our team, the student, <laughs> when they implement all these kinds of things, even they have five qubit, but we, we are only working on one qubit, two qubit is already very time consuming, even though it is not like the physics student in the lab, the whole day adjusting all the mirror for the optics and so forth is still very, very time consuming. Can we do better? Can we simplify the process? We thought that we have the new theory and turn out that this is actually, uh, and by other people um, in no dimension case or in some special case. And so I said this process can be um, uh, significantly improved by using the so-called ancillary assist method, quantum state tomography. What is the idea? The idea is that if you want to do a quantum state n by n matrix, if you are willing to find a sigma, which is also an n by n density matrix, okay? So the setup is that for any positive integer, okay, 
again, our interest will be two to the power n, small n. But for any q, did and so forth, the same proposition apply, saying that if you you can always pre-select, set up your apparatus by choosing a suitable, and usually it could be the pure state in the in 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 a, a very simple pure state in the n, n by n density matrix. In matrix theory, it's the U11, the standard matrix unit. And you can always find a suitable rotation unitary matrix, but the size will be n squared. Why? Because we can set up sigma and u so that for any n by n density matrix, arbitrary density matrix, you can perform this tensor product. Of course, we get an n squared times n squared matrix. So rightfully, you can apply this unitary, okay, this rotation, and then you measure the diagonal. Then of course, there will be n square so many diagonal, and those diagonal entry can be used to determine rho. Only one u, no more rotation. You choose your u, you choose your sigma at the beginning of the <laughs> everything. Then once you have this black box, this machine, any row, you just do the tensor, use the same sigma, use the same sigma, use the same u, which is the, your experimental setup in your lab. And you can get the statistics of the diagonal entry of this n square by n square matrix, then you're done. Obviously, when you have a n square by n square matrix, you look at the diagonal, you get n square diagonal entry, but this is still a density matrix. So you lost one degree of freedom. That is good enough. N square minus one is precisely the number of real data we need to determine a row, right? Row is the unknown guy, the hidden guy. You want to find out what is this row. So again, a little bit of major theory will ensure that you can always do that. So that's the theoretical part. And then we come to the um, practical issue, how to actually construct it, and then finally put it in IBM quantum computer or the last two, three slides will be NMR quantum computer. In the lab, I understand from some, not many, but at least some physics friends, they will have some um, standard Hamiltonian standard setup. They would know what you to choose to perform the experiment. Or sometimes it's just limited by the lab setup. You cannot get all kinds of U, but some of those U work. Yep. So that is the way they uh, have some nice scheme so that they can do the tomography problem. Even though mathematically I said that you can always do that, maybe by, by, by experience, people know how to choose the uh, sigma and the u. As I said, sigma can always be chosen to be the pure state because you can always absorb it in, in, in the unitary matrix, at least theoretically. There's no harm to assume sigma is the pure state u11 one, one, if I use the matrix notation. Anyone in the audience have this experience? For a two qubit stay, I add two qubit so that I get a four qubit stay, and then you can do a rotation. The diagonal will tell me everything. If that can be done, it's wonderful. Now, since I don't have physics uh, experience, so I will approach it by a mathematical way, which is the following. So I look at the Pure state, I choose the pure state. As I said, it's like the E11. When I do the tensor product, the matrix structure will be very simple. Row will just sit on the left top corner. Then you apply U. In matrix theory, we know that such a multiplication only involves the first N column of U and therefore the first N row of U dagger. So <laughs> in the lab, or in, in, in quantum physics, you always want to look at the unitary. It come around from some Hamiltonian or something like that. In mathematics, <laughs> we don't care. We care about the first n column, which what we call a partial isometry. So we completely change the game in some sense. To find a U, which will achieve our goal, we try to construct this n square by n. You look at the dimension of this R, the partial isometry. So that now you just multiply row. I don't care about the other column of you. And first ask the question, can I even find an R to make it work? Of course, by the theorem. 
it exists. Among all the possible R to make it work, can I find some, 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 some R which is simple? A lot of zero, for example, very few non-zero entry. But even more important is that the end of the story is after you find the puzzle isometry R, which is simple, I have to add columns to make a unitary. Again, in mathematics, we know that if you give me a part of the unitary matrix, the first n column, I can always find other columns to make it work. There are lots of room there, capital N squared minus N so many columns I can add to form my U. So the story, at least in mathematics, the opportunities for us is that, can I find, there are many choices of this N column, and there are many choices to complete this to a unit three. Can I make use of this freedom to choose a very nice U so that it is easy to implement? The measurement would be very, very easy to determine my original hidden density matrix row and do it in a very accurate way. So that will be the challenge. But I know all this thing exists. So instead of using experience in the lab, what to do? I would, um, from the mathematical way, look at it in this way. Yep. Okay. So up to this point, the good thing is that instead of using, for example, a five qubit, I only need to have another five qubit. So let me move on to the qubit, which is most uh, mostly used in quantum information science. So if I have an n qubit state, I can use n assist, assisting and sealer, the, 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 the helper. And this is you determine. After you set up the scheme, you determine if you have to deal with um, n qubit state, you'll find a n assistant and sealer, as I said, all can be pure state. And then the, determine your you to make this work. And once you choose this guy, only one experimental setup. I would not say one measurement. Of course, it depends on how many um, experiments you do, right? So, so one experimental setup would allow you to determine row. So you have the black box. Whoever give you a row, you just put it in, tensor it with sigma, and then do this U, collect the diagonal, then blah, you can tell people what is the, the row. So that is what happened here. Much more preferred than the previous case. And the, and the tensor product make the matrix grow very, very quickly, you see? You just tensor with the same dimension matrix, but immediately you have enough diagonal data to tell you this. The, the, um, versus you have to do many, many, like even five qubit, the previous slide, we know that 33 setup have to be done. Now the price to pay is to use 10 qubit, five assisting, five to be determined, and then one measurement, you get the complete answer. One measurement, meaning that one uh, uh, measurement setup. But still, uh, the challenge is that all this theory only guarantee that you can do that. How actually you can do that, as I said, depending on either experience from the physics uh, physicist uh, intuition that you know what kinds of unitary operator would do what, or we use mathematics to use some trick to do that. So for instance, in our case, we can, for one qubit, a very simple case, I only need to one other qubit to help determine it. So in the IBM network, for example, I can find a simple unit three. The setup is just two local unit three. And then this is the control Hadamard gate. So these two things together will form my unit three U, okay? So this consists of a R tensor S or S tensor R1 naturally, the way it's set up. And then there's a control Hadamard gate, this two simple unit three multiplied together to give me this U. And once we let the qubit Q1 to assist Q0, you do the measurement, you get four diagonal entry, which is only three, because sum up to one, then um, that is enough for you to get the one qubit information. Remember our early slide, A, B, C are the three param parameter. If we only have one qubit circuit, we have to do it three times, three rotation. But now if you have a circuit consists of two qubit, then you only need to find one assisting qubit and then do one measurement setup. Then you get the three number ABC in one sort.
Good. Any comment or answer or suggestion? Okay. If no, then we move to different platform. So, of course, there are different um, competitors for quantum computer nowadays, and there are many ways that you can realize uh, the quantum com com computing theory. So likewise, for this uh, quantum tomography problem, we can look at the IBM, I think they use ion traps as the basis, but to us, we just set up the network, they produce the statistics the result we can use. And you can, uh, I think, linear optics, right? So I have to talk, uh, consult Rigon more about that. Um, but at least I'm glad that uh, Mikkel joined our team and then work on this. And then we start to, to see how NMRL quantum computer uh, can help our problem or what kinds of issues it we will face when we use that computing environment. So here's the red thing. I'm so glad that Mikio is here because I'm just copying from his book and um, mentioning this main feature of NMR uh, computing environment, the quantum computing environment. So in that case, we know that for the previous case, the standard quantum mechanics book will tell you that if there are n physical state, when you do the measurement, you can own, always collapse it to the one of the, 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 the physical state and therefore you get the statistics for the end diagonal, diagonal entries. That is all the basis. But for NMR, it is different. Actually, there will, there will be some um, intrinsic time development so that the quantum state, actually the time parameter there depending on how you connect those uh, qubit in this uh, MRL quantum environment. And, and very interesting that it can yield for a n by n density matrix realized as, or actually it's the other way around. Of course, it's the qubit in the quantum, uh, in the NMR quantum uh, system. That n by n corresponding n by n density matrix, when you apply some measurement to it, you can actually get instead of a for a n by n density matrix, you can get more than n piece of information, real data, by which I mean measurement setup. Of course, the measurement is again statistics. So you look at the ensemble of the num state, and then you do, do measurement on that with the setup, then you can extract information. For example, for a two by two qubit, because of this t parameter, you have cosine t, sine t uh, function in it. So instead of getting one piece of information, like what we did in the very first slide or transparency, you can get two real data. Namely, you actually measure the one, two entry using my matrix representation. So when we use the IBM quantum computer, for a two by two density matrix, if we do not use ancilla assist QST, we have to do three measurement to get out my ABC. But now if I use NMR technique to do that, one sort I can get the one two entry. Then I just need to use the rotation U I mentioned. You rotate the diagonal entry A into the one two entry, measure it one more time. Then you get more than enough N, uh, information to determine the qubit. Okay. Very, very surprising. Or to me at least. Right. And then for how about if a, a four by four density matrix, which is two qubit quantum state. Okay. But just look at the four by four density matrix. Very interestingly, the setup will tell you that you can get the one, two, one, three, two, four, three, four. Imagine your four by four matrix is the hidden guy. You do the measurement, you will actually reveal the one, two, one, three, two, four, three, four entry. And of course, accordingly, two, one, three, one, um, four, two, four, three entry will be revealed. But anyway, counting the real data you get is eight linearly independent data. They are not even on the diagonal. And indeed, if you do one rotation, you get another independent egg data, which can be done. And we know what, what matrix to use. It's exactly the picture I showed you earlier. Very interesting. 
that, that matrix also work. I show you for the IBM setup, which will give you another eight independent data. You have 16 independent data, actually redundant, because we only need 15. Remember, for a four by four density matrix, if I do not use ancilla assist quantum state tomography, how many measurement setup I have to do? How many rotation I have to use? It's four plus one, five. But here I do two, row itself and a rotation. These two setup allow me to completely determine the four by four density matrix. Actually, I have one more piece of information redundant. Okay. Um, Mathematician are very stingy. If we have one more piece of information, we would try to make good use of it to see whether we can improve the accuracy and so forth. That is the next step. But surprisingly, a five-step process now become a two-step process. Of course, they are different. The two platforms we are using are different. Okay. But of course, we need not throw away the idea of a Encilla assist UST. So for example, if you have a single qubit, and you can again use the, I use the uh, matrix notation E11 I mentioned earlier. So you use E11, okay? So this is what, two by two, two by two, you get a four by four state. What you would want to know is the single qubit sigma, okay? Now you form your row tilde by setting up U11 tensor row with a su suitable V. Then now you put this row tilde, this two qubit state, using the NMR method to do it, you get one, two, one, three, two, four, three, four entry. Eight real data. Eight real data, of course, is more than enough to determine sigma. Sigma is only a two by two density matrix. Three data is needed to determine that. So I have over-determined system. Good or not good? depending on whether you can make good use of those information. So another piece of mathematics turned out to be important in this study because we found out that, or actually working with the Miko, we, we, we realized that actually the, if you use a fancy word, the, the, the network topology, or you just talk about the qubit connection of the NMR, uh, number environment is important to determine. So all this funny number, right? For the first few slide, only diagonal. So very, very clear. Every time you get a diagonal entry up to the suitable arrangement of the basis. For every density matrix, a measurement in the lab on an ensemble of those quantum state, you always can get information about diagonal matrix. But for NMR, suddenly it is one, two, one, three, two, four, three, four entry. How about eight by eight? That's another list of entries you can get. How do we decide that? So it depending on how you connect that. So it turns out that if you have for two qubit, that's only one way the two qubit in the NMR environment interact. But if you have three qubit, the story is different. They can interact in this way. They can interact in a triangular way. It turns out that this different configuration will determine different number of entry you can extract. Then we do some calculation. The most aggressive one is that everything is connected, so-called the complete graph topology of the qubit connection. Then we can get as many as so many real data. And as long as this data is enough for you to determine density matrix, then we are in business. We can determine that. So for n qubit state, we only need to add k as long as log 2n plus k is bigger than or equal to n minus k. Then that will work. For sure, if you get, add n more, it will work. But potentially, it's much, much lower. You look at the previous case, for example, for two qubit using the IBM quantum computer, we need two assisting and still. But for NMR quantum computer, we only need to use one assistant and sealer, then we can do the job, okay? Now, my time is up. So I think it's a um, so summary and then conclude. Um, so of course, all this, the, the op optimal arrangement 
of the qubit configuration and then the how to choose sigma and you to make the setup easy is a challenging challenging job so in any event what i want to bring up here is that um, we talk about theoretical and practical issue in um, state tomography the first lesson is that if we only use n circuit to do or we can only handle n qubit circuit to handle a n qubit uh, state tomography we may need to do many, many experimental setup. Okay? And it is challenging to find simple you do that. And there is a minimum number, which we know, which is exactly the dimension N plus capital N plus one. With the assist, Ancilla assistant, then this is much easier, but still we have the challenge of finding you. And uh, sometimes the, to construct this sigma and U, the cubic configuration, in your NMR, for example, a setup would be important. Even in IBM, the IBM quantum computer behind the architecture may be different, right? So what I hope to achieve, <laughs> hope that uh, this uh, will not be too boring for you. And hopefully there's some interesting uh, physics uh, experience idea can come by with mathematical insight to uh, find a good scheme. And particularly, our team is working very happily together. So I think it's a very good topic to introduce to beginning researcher and bring physicists and mathematicians together. So with that, um, I hope you find interesting and maybe you have some idea to help me to do the job. I will start my talk here. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah, Professor Chi Guangdi for the interesting talk. So right now, yeah. So this talk is open for question or comment. Okay, there's one. <clears throat> yes, so, so about using many ANSILA, so it, indeed the, the information is probably hidden in the very big space, but how to decode it and, and yes. Yeah, so right, so in, in matrix theory, we can um, set up the U, and once you set up the U, once you have the diagonal entry, so this is just a linear transformation to use the N square minus one uh, or, um, real number, then you can use it to reconstruct by a simple linear transformation. You bring up a very good point. Mathematically, it is easy to, um, to recover the role, but how to set it up so that the recovery process is stable because the measurement of the n square diagonal entry may carry some error, obviously. So the ideal thing eventually is not only the process of finding our role using those data is easy, but stable. So in some earlier paper, people in some other platform talk about that. But, but mathematically, it is very easy. Once you choose your sigma, you choose your u, then I can tell you, oh, once you get that n squared minus one entry, how do we construct row? That is a simple linear transformation. The rest is no more uh, quantum physics. It's just simple linear algebra. But, but the linear transformation is a matrix in an exponentially large space. So even classical computation. Right? No, 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 it's, a, it's n square. Now, you, you, you want to consider a, uh, a n by n, capital N by n density matrix. You have to handle so many data. The linear transformation is just changing this n by n matrix to another n by n matrix. So the, the, the dimension is stay at that, that level, right? If, if you cannot handle n by n density matrix from day one, you cannot do anything. But if you can handle that, then it is just square. And linear transformation bringing an n by n matrix to so an n by n matrix is not exponent. Well, <laughs> it's expand. If n is going exponential, yes, the whole process is expand exponential. I agree. But up to that level, once you can handle n qubit, uh, n by n density matrix, that transformation is just restrict at that stage, that level, right? Thank you. Okay. So any question from the audience uh, on site? or online? Yeah, <laughs> I would love to hear answer or any idea. But talking about the expo exponential, the assisting thing is sort of linear. You use, if you count the number of qubit, but the number of setup you do for the non-assisting part is really exponential to the power n or things like that, which is quite, quite, quite bad. Okay. So yeah, if there's no more question, yeah, uh, please join me to thank uh, yeah, Professor Chi Guangdi again. Okay. And thank you. Actually, we are looking forward to see 
him, yeah, in person in Taiwan. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we we'll move to the next talk. Okay, so the next talk is given by Doctor. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, Guo. Okay. Yeah, from National Chaotong University. Yeah. Uh, Guo Gaolin. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he received his uh, PhD from actually from National Tsinghua University with Professor Yeah Li Zhongjin in uh, 2015. Okay. And his expertise on the 